Hey there, I'm Max. I wrote my IP exams last year and right now I'm studying aerospace engineering at TU Delft and in this video I'm going to talk about how to get a 7 in IB chemistry. Okay, so first I'm going to talk about how to learn anything, then specifically how to learn IB content, then how to study for IB chemistry exams, then I'm going to tell you a bit about extra helpful resources that helped me along the way and at the end I'm going to give some general exam tips. So how do you learn anything? Well, the first concept I'd like to talk about is the 80-20 principle, also called the Pareto principle. It states that 80% of the results come from 20% of the causes. So let's say 100% is the maximum effort you can give. By doing just 20% of the right work, you can definitely get a 7 in chemistry. Now the hard part about this is to know what exactly these 20% represent, but hopefully by the end of this video, you'll understand and know what that portion represents. Now the second and third principle I'd like to talk about is active recall and spaced repetition. Now there are so many videos online about that, but these are the two main techniques I used to do rather well in chemistry. Now active recall is basically just testing yourself over and over, and it kind of makes sense that if you do something over and over again, you get better better at it and that's exactly what you want to practice right because you want to practice testing yourself because in the end a test is what you're going to be graded on and special petition basically says that you should test yourself at different time intervals once you've actually learned something so for example if you learn something on day one you might repeat it on day two then on day five then on day 18 and then on day 24 for example basically means you should always leave a little bit more time between testing yourself and in theory that's how you get information into your long-term memory so yeah always keep these two things in mind 80-20 principle and active recall and space repetition. Okay, but now diving into more IB related stuff. The good thing about a specific school curriculum is that you know exactly what you have to know. The IB provides a syllabus for each and every subject or I think they call it a guide. For example, here the chemistry guide. You open the guide, you go to the topic you're currently studying and then you only look at understandings and applications. Everything else you ignore. And in understandings, it's mostly facts or concepts you just have to know and memorize. Whereas in application and skills, as it says, it's a skill you have to be able to apply or do during the exam. So when you're studying, take this as more or less a checklist you have to go through. And how I would study is by making flashcards. I would make at least one flashcard per bullet point. So for example, for the second bullet point topic two, my question would be, what is the charge of an electron or what is the charge of the particle that's around the nucleus, for example. Although by this time, you should really know this, but as an example. So I'd have that card and then on the back it says, uh, electrons are negatively charged. That's basically a flashcard right there. For the applications and skills, it's rather hard to make these flashcards. There, you simply have to go through practice questions, but I'll go into that later as well. But you can also use physical flashcards. Actually, that's what I did for my GCSEs. Or you can use one of two options, which I prefer. One of which is Anki and Google Sheets. Anki is a program where you can just throw your flashcards in there and then it'll show them to you. And then once you've done the flashcard, it'll ask you how hard or easy this flashcard was. And if it's hard, it'll ask you again in like a day. Uh, but if it was easy, it'll ask you again in a week. Problem with that is that you don't really know how good you are with each flashcard from the get-go. You have to actually do it. So what I used was Google Sheets. And for example, let's go to topic two. How it works is that in column A, I have the question. And then in column B, in white writing, I have the answer so you can't see it. So for example, what is the mass number of an atom? I think about it and I'm like, oh yes, it's the sum of protons and neutrons. And then I color code it green. But for example, if it says state Hund's rule, and to be honest, I don't know what Hund's rule is right now, and I don't know it, it's apparently this, that's way too long to read out right now, then I color code it red. And then depending on how topic two went, I go back to the overview and for atomic structure. So here, for example, as well, these are the topics I didn't know at that time when I was studying. So the Alpha Principle, Hund's Principle, and Pauli's Principle, I think. And then right there, what's today? Today is the 26th of February. So I put that down there, uh, 22, and maybe it was orange. So I'd make it orange. And then I do that for all the topics. And as you can see, first four, because I've done this also for my end of years again. So I was pretty confident with these four topics. They're green. But when it comes to like organic chemistry, it's like red and yellow. So I'll have to do those again. Now for Google Sheets, you probably have to do your own or I will also leave this Google Sheet in the description below. But for Anki, I think there are a couple of decks already out there made by students and you can simply download those. So here really depends what your preference is, but definitely flashcards are the way to go to learn IB content. After you went through one flashcard deck, for example, topic two, you can go back to your study guide 
and see if you've checked everything off. If you actually know and understand everything you need to be able to do. And that's always a good way to know that you're actually confident and done with that topic. Okay, so now you've learned everything using these flashcards. Now you have to properly study for an IB exam. So it's getting closer to exam season. And the only way I recommend is just do every past paper that's available to you. So do this follows and it's actually pretty simple. So basically you write the past paper, you look at the answer key and you look at the questions you couldn't fully answer. And for seven, you have to be very strict with yourself. So if you didn't write down the word that they want to see in the answer key, don't give yourself the point. And all those questions you couldn't fully answer, you write them down in some document, and then you move on. And then once you've done all those past papers, or maybe a week later after you've done a couple, you return to those questions you couldn't fully answer, and you try to see if you could answer them now, to actually see if you've learned something from doing all those past papers. And do that over and over again, until you could answer every single question on those past papers. This is beneficial for so many reasons. First of all, you identify which topics you know and which you don't know. So you can go back and revise those topics you did not know yet. The second thing is that the IB is very repetitive, meaning that they ask you the same question. There is always slight alteration. So you've probably already seen a bulk of the questions that you will have on your actual exam paper. The third is you're practicing exactly what the IB wants you to do, because in the end, the IB doesn't actually test you on how well you know the subject, but it tests you on how well you can answer specific tests and questions. The fourth reason, or I, I've lost count to be honest, is that it's an antidote against being nervous because you've done so many past papers that your actual exam paper will just feel like another past paper. You've done this so many times, so why get nervous? And I think one of the biggest reasons is that you train your autopilot. You can't guarantee that you're gonna feel absolutely perfect on the day of your exam, but what you can do is basically train your subconscious that you don't even have to actively think when you're doing a question, you just do it. It's like a reflex, the autopilot just takes over. But in order to train that autopilot, the only thing you can do is do tons and tons of past papers. Okay, now I'm gonna go into some helpful resources I used along the way. One of which is our textbook, which we used. It's called Chemistry for the IB Diploma. It's from Cambridge and it's written by Steve Owen. This book is absolutely great. It condenses all of the information. It has practice questions after every subtopic and also like exam style questions, which is great. And the most important thing is that at the beginning of each subtopic, they have like a small summary of everything you have to learn, which is more or less a checklist and it's the syllabus, but it more detail. You can actually use this checklist rather than the checklist of the syllabus because the syllabus is a little vague whereas this is really specific. So if you can get your hands on this book I really recommend it. The second source of content is Cognity. Cognity is like an online book basically but it also tests you after every topic and it also has like questions which are a bit more interactive and it also has like exam style questions and I think you can also compete against your other friends with like a five question quiz which is really fun as well. So yeah definitely check out Cognity. Our school provided it but I think it costs something so maybe you can ask your teachers to somehow provide that for you or you can get your hands on it yourself. Okay another thing I would really recommend are the Smart Prep IB Chemistry flashcards. They are physical but they're absolutely great because they cover everything and they actually ask you questions which will look like the questions on the exam. These definitely cost a little but I think it was worth the investment. Lastly, I just want to get into some general exam tips. First of all, during the exam season, definitely have a sleep schedule. The worst thing you can do is be tired during your exam season. So go to bed at the same time and wake up at the same time and get like eight to nine hours of sleep. For me, it's rather long. I got nine hours of sleep during the exam season, but maybe you're different and you need less or more. Then eat properly during an exam day. If you have one in the morning, get a proper breakfast, not a lot of sugar, lots of carbs and protein, and definitely don't eat lots of sugar before the exam, because then during the exam, you just have a fat sugar dip, trust me, and you do not want that. <laughs> in the middle of exam, when you've gone through the exam one time and you've left out some of the questions you weren't really sure about, that's the perfect time to take a one minute break where you can meditate, for example. Just close your eyes, breathe in and out slowly 10 times, and then get back into the exam. And also, after the exam, don't worry about it. Just be happy that you finish it and move on to the next one. There's no point in worrying about it. Just 
get started on preparing for your next exam. All right, that's it for me. If there are any questions, if I should clarify anything, please ask in the comments or DM me on Instagram. If you also take physics and would like to get a seven in physics, click on this video. If you're interested in what life looks like after the IB, then click on this video. And for more IB content, consider subscribing. That's it for me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.